making great progress today. So we got a few of the key main features in place. Number one, skimmer is installed. So I'm really happy with that because remember, in order to have a healthy ecosystem, we need to have something that's going to be capturing and removing that leaf debris. If we don't remove that, it's gonna to sink to the bottom and it's gonna to start to add to the nutrient load as well as the sediments. And you're gonna see a decline in the water quality over time. So by having that skimmer in place, that's gonna stop that process from occurring. The other thing that we have in place is we're starting to do some of our rock work. We reutilized one of these big slabs. This was actually used inside of the waterfall. We repositioned it to actually have a standing area adjacent to the pond. There was a spot right here in the middle of the patio where the bricks were set in a flat orientation. I think there may have been a bridge or something going across at some point, I'm not really sure, but that's what it looked like to me. So we wanted to utilize that for this big giant rock to actually have a destination place in between the waterfall and the deep zone where the fish are gonna be located. The other thing we did was we cut out that area for that viewing area. We're gonna continue doing our stonework up the side. And as we're doing that, we're just taking our excavator and setting boulders down in the bottom, repositioning everything by hand. And we're gonna work our way from the bottom all the way to the top, covering the bottom with new river rock, cobblestones, making all types of unique bottom sections for the different types of fish as well as microorganisms and all the different frogs and things like that that are gonna live inside of this brand new ecosystem. One of the problems that happened when our old pump was kind of starting to fail yep. is that when it would shut off, it would basically drain the waterfall yes. and you'd hear a bunch of gargling and all of a sudden it was like someone flushed a toilet into your pond. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. <laughs> <laughs> How do I prevent that from happening? Because, you know, obviously if the pump ever shuts off again, I don't want all that waste no. to enter the pond because I just got done pulling Correct. it up. Yeah, so the biological filter is a wastewater treatment plant. So it's like a septic system. So it's loaded with microbes and bacteria that are gonna break down all the fish waste. So this device right here is gonna to totally take care of the problem. We're using a 5,000 and 9,000 adjustable SLD pump. It's a solids handling pump. It's gonna be very energy efficient, but it still allows us to handle some of those larger solids and things like that that are gonna bypass through the filtering system, through the basket, as well as the filter mat itself but I like low maintenance. Once we set all that stuff up, I don't want to have any issues. This is a check valve system, so it has a one-way valve. So as the water gets pumped up, it opens up, but it has like a little ledge that it sits on. So it opens up and allows the water to pass. As soon as the pump stops, the weight of the water pushes it down and it slams it shut. Ooh, very cool. Stops all the water from back flushing out. Very nice. And that'll protect all that stuff from back flushing in but also what's going to happen is going to keep that biological filter underwater yeah. so that way when the power does come back down the bacteria and the microorganisms are still alive because they're going to be fully saturated if that drains down all that junk goes in here 
toxic fumes, all that stuff gets spewed into the pond, but the bacteria and everything is gonna suffer as well. So this yeah. way it solves two problems just with that one little piece. That's very cool. I really like that feature. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, we do too. It saved us a lot of heartaches, <laughs> that's for sure. Waterfall looks phenomenal. Just turned it on. I love the flow. We just kind of tweaked it a little bit just to get that water kind of twisting and turning its way around, which I love to do. It's all those little details. I do have a mental picture always when I'm designing and building. Sometimes it kind of comes out exact and sometimes I got to tweak it a little bit, yeah. but I love the sound. I love the sights. It's recreating a really cool little environment here. Now we're hopping up here now that it's operational yep. and we're going to plant this upper section. So this is the upper area of the biological filter and you went to the grocery store and picked up watercress, yeah. which is awesome. <laughs> One of my favorites, I have it at my personal home. It does incredible in this little tray system that's in this top area of the biological filter. It's gonna help naturalize everything. It is an edible plant, and it's also gonna give us a lot of filtration. How we planted this, just so you know, we basically, we pull out some of that gravel. You wanna plant this guy? Yep. We'll just kinda of tuck them right in there. So the watercress, it's gonna root itself very, very easily. Luke just went to the local grocery store, picked it up, and those cuttings, we put them into water, and within days, you're gonna to start to see that root system spreading out. Fast-growing plants like this are incredible filtration systems. So yep. it's really going to amend the overall water quality. So all of you out there that are watching, tell me, down below what you've been planting in your water features. Any edible plants, any unique things. I'm a perpetual student. I love learning new things, love talking to Luke, getting all these incredible ideas about all the amazing things that you're gonna be doing inside the pond as well as outside. So there are so yeah. many, so many opportunities that we have that we can take advantage of a living ecosystem like this. And what I enjoy about it is once you have this pool of water up here, I would recommend taking some of the water from this to actually water the different plants that you're gonna put in yeah. around the pond because there's no chlorine in it. It's gonna have dissolved nutrients and minerals and things from the fish waste. So it's a great source of water. And then you add city water back into the system to kind of replenish it. So I think it's a good way to keep that water cycle going and it's gonna be much, much better for your plants. Yeah, no, I'm super excited. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Well, it has been an honor working with you oh. as well as the other CAC. So I want to give you an official Sweet. Ed the Palm Professor t-shirt. I get some swag. <laughs> awesome. Hey, I appreciate it. Now uh, everywhere I go, people uh, go, oh, do you know Ed? So that's awesome. That is super cool. Thank you so much. You're, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for Defin coming out. Definitely check out am i gardener luke you're a wealth of knowledge you have some incredible content out there so definitely everybody please check them out and next week you're going to see the finished water feature and it looks phenomenal i cannot wait it looks great now it's going to look better and better once you do your magic around the outside perimeter absolutely thank you so much it's been a pleasure we'll see you soon